This is the If More Let's Divide podcast. Yo, Charlie, what did happen? Um, welcome to the If More Let's Divide podcast. And yeah, a new brand new week means another episode. You know, we drop weekly wherever you stream your podcast audio at. And we are now on YouTube. And now, introducing my co host, Charlie. Fred, what did happen? What's good, my G? Charlie, it's been wet, you know, for for some days now. It's been very, very, very yeah, wet. It's been raining. It, to- yeah. it broke down my wall. Oh. So I'm having to... Yeah, rebuild. And rebuild. But Destroy and rebuild. Yeah. Um. Yeah, Charlie, Fred, Um. should I do the introduction or... You should. We should or, yeah, or I we think should you should do the honest. Yeah, yeah, do the honest. Okay, so... On this week's episode of the podcast, we have, um, so I was thinking, right, if we, it, it's not right to say every single thing that he does, does because there are quite a few. It was a whole paragraph. Yeah, there are quite a few. So I think the word, the umbrella word should be an artist yeah but i like the multidisciplinary yeah, artist multi, yeah multidisciplinary multidisciplinary artist multidisciplinary artist that way the long go yeah yeah multidisciplinary artist um so we should introduce him using yeah. that right yeah and i mean we shouldn't even i was going to mention his government name mm. but a few people know him by his government name. Okay. Everybody calls him Beat Menace. So, guys, help me welcome Kofi Beat Menace. What up? What up? What up? What up? Yeah, 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 yeah. Charlie, Kofi, Kofi Beat Menace. <laughs> you know, me, <laughs> me, me. There, there are days that I add the Kofi and. Quite recently, or for a long time, I've not been calling him Beat Menace. So if you want to grab your drink, let, let me know. Or I, I can pull the table cool. close to you too. You yeah. know, for, for, for quite a long time now, I've been calling him Kofi. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, um, so, so Beat Menace, before we come to your government name, why Beat Menace? <laughs> Charlie, that would be some question though. Yeah. I don't even know how it came about really. Um, you know, yeah, some things that I, just I'm, I'm sure you got this name for you, possibly N- not friends. My 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 memory about it is a little blurry. I won't even lie. It's just one of those things that you know. I, I've tried, you know, over time to like just toss it away because mm. it's sort of shoeboxed. Yeah, yeah. What I do okay. to one thing. You know, which isn't necessarily bad because sometimes if you're everything, you're nothing at all. You yeah. know, so it is what it is. But as much as possible, Charlie, I try um, mm. maintain them, um, but also throw light on the fact that I am also Kofi Bwachi Ansa. Yeah, because yeah. Um, the first time I, Charlie Iche, you know, um, I've known you for a long time. Yeah, I always have to ask this question. How did you guys meet? <laughs> I, I, I can't remember. I can't remember. <laughs> yeah. But I've always known Motobo. Yeah. Like, it'd be just... I don't know, man. It's a blur. Yeah, yeah. I No, I I really can't remember. I but really I mean, remember. over time, we... But it's definitely been over a decade. Yeah. Old. Oh, oh, definitely more oh, than a decade. More, more because than I knew cry. him long before I got married. Yeah, yeah. You know? More than cry. Um, yeah. And we also came up in various scenes yeah. at different times. So... For as long as I've remembered, yeah, Motomo yeah. was always around. Okay. Yeah. You know? Okay. Yes. Yeah, someone would yeah. say um, the beat menace name maybe because you make beats. Most certainly. I mean, yeah, that's how it came about. But I can't think about I can't think of the person who suggested the name or whether, you know, I played a part. It it just happened. Mm, yeah, yeah. You know, but definitely it it had to do you know, with uh, the fact that I used to produce or make beats. How long have you been, where are you producing beats for? Wow. Um, I've produced since I was 13, maybe. 
14. Mm. Wow. I, uh, yeah, I started producing uh, quite early. Early, oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. And I mean, I started out doing the usual thing of like drumming on the table, having a cassette recorder, record that and all that stuff. Before um, I ever got a chance to program on a keyboard. And then I credit my friend. Uh, you know him, Manfire Tendai. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So he was the one who... Um, they had like an extra computer that his mom did not mind us using, you know, okay. to install software and then experiment with what, you know, it felt like. I mean, we're in a rap group. So it was I, Manfire, and then Serial. What's the know, name Cyril. of the group? You don't want to know, man. It's, <laughs> it's embarrassing. <laughs> it was NT, oh. you know. Um, NT Nipa Tum Tum. At the time, Charlie won a tree. Oh, that's dope. So it was like, it should have been a B before. Okay. But we didn't know that. So oh. black people. So yeah. Nipa Tum Tum. NT, oh, you okay. know, so I'm um, he's an architect, you know, now living in London, of course. I mean, you guys know Serial, mm, yeah. So it was I, it was actually Tindai, I, and then Serial. Mm, so we had okay. like a rap group, and he used to produce, I used to produce, and then it just went on from there. So, yeah, I guess that's how it started, yeah. You know, um, when, when you made mention of drumming on the table and tip tape rec recorders what yeah. caused what came to me was you you came up or you grew up in a home that was well off right not because m for me in my house i didn't have any table there, w there wasn't any dining table to drum on they would give you your food and you would hold it in your hands that would mean say no, yeah, no, no. yeah, you know, if there table were, be the measure for yeah. doing well, I, I know, yeah. I know, right? <laughs> you know, you know, no, no, seriously, that's back a then, strange really. metric. Back then, use. you having a dining table meant you had a big house. Oh, shit. Actually. okay, okay, I've yes. never thought, yeah, okay. yes, there wasn't a dining table, it was we lived, I, I still, you know, we lived in an estate at that time, it wasn't like my grandma or my uncle or my mom yeah. hadn't made it hadn't added the extension mm -hmm. so it was just one room the living room and the kitchen no actually mm. you talk something i just thought about you my know? growing up yeah living with my granddad and so many states yeah there was no dining table yeah so anyone who goes like oh i am i'm i'm having dinner i go <laughs> like oh you are bougie because i never said dinner you know we would say well, uh, we would say supper <laughs> No, <laughs> think about know. it. Um, so if you are drumming on tables in the house, I'm sure they, it was a dining table. So how was your upbringing? Like who is your father, your mother? Like, you know, yeah. Oh, me, I come from very humble beginnings. I mean, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't even... Trying to be more modest. No, 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 not at all. Um, but really, you see, it's a spectrum. I still feel, I mean, using a dining table as a metric to, <laughs> to gauge... <laughs> That's just weird. That was funny. But I mean, I never thought about it. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie. But I mean, uh, my parents did the best they could, you know, given the circumstances. Um, my mom still like hands down still one of my favorite people in the world. Mm. She's like she and I are really close. Do, like do, till this do. day, when me and my mommy they hang, people they feel say my big sis. Oh wow. You know, yeah, and she looks way younger than she actually is. You know, my dad on the other hand is your typical stereotype. African dad, you know, if there was any such thing, like yeah. if you type, you know, the dictionary definition of discipline, sort of, yeah, but in a weird way, and you know, I mean, you would have his photograph there, you bab, if you, if you search for what such a person should look like, that's my, like my dad, you mm. know, um, very stern type person, extremely funny, and what amplifies. That aspect of him is the fact that you know no say be funny. You know those kind of people. Like <laughs> yeah, everything yeah, they do be funny. Like yeah. yeah, but he's a very complex individual. And every day I respect my mom. You or know, being able to. Yeah, I, honestly, I don't think if he if he didn't meet my mom, anybody would have been able to like just handle his shit. Like he's a lot. He's very intense. Mm -hmm. We should you talk know? to your wife. <laughs> 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 I know, but <laughs> Charlie, but Charlie. Honestly, I think, you know, I mean, everybody has their baggage, yeah, right? Yeah. But my dad is Charlie. Mm. Yeah, but he's a, he's a lovable person too. It'd be weird. Mm. Like, 
like he's Charlie my puppy be some paradox I don't go like yeah. but um was he the one who introduced you to 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 art he encouraged it at some okay. point but my dad is not he, I don't think he has a single creative bone in his body mm. I, I, I what, definitely what does, what does he do or who, my dad's a professor oh, okay. of archaeology he's an archaeologist Fred you see yeah there we go yeah I was about to say <laughs> no, 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 but so so I was right he right yeah <laughs> yeah okay no yeah. no I, I don't think well I guess to a certain degree we were privileged okay. to a certain yeah. degree but I wouldn't say we were like um, well to do or anything but mm. we're comfortable you know mm. we my, my, my parents did um, they tried to take us to the best schools they could afford and I mean they come f- from that sort of place mm. you know what I mean academia and, yeah academia mm. I mean I also had did, did did my bits in academia and so I mean I had to do the best I could in school you know because mentally I felt that if I had good grades I would be able to lean back and do these other stuff that I loved, you mm. know. My mom, however, is a very creative person. Um, she's a typical fancy woman, you understand. And so, and I was very much my mama's baby, even though I was the second of five kids. Mm. Okay. So I have a brother who is almost two years older than I am, then it's me, and then I'm four years before a girl, the only girl, and then two boys after her. Okay. Yeah, so I, I mean, by the time I was six, I knew how to cook and bake. Oh, wow. Yeah, like, That's, I always made my mommy body. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you a fancy, fancy woman? You yeah, know. she did. She then, did then so, like sweetness. <laughs> yeah, she did so. So she would be watching a film. Uh, back in the day, you know, you had a VCR. You yeah, know what I mean? You watching see, a film. You yeah. see, second, second, second pointer. <laughs> no, 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 no. But, no, 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 no. But I mean, VCR, VCR, like, this is the 80s you're talking about. No, 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 no. Just, uh, no. Early 90s. Ni- 90s. Like, 90s. If, if you had a VCR in your home in Ghana, especially. Yeah. This wasn't M- in Ghana. S- this wasn't in Ghana. Point three. So you <laughs> no, see no, 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 no. Hang on. <laughs> Charlie, then Ghana had. That's why my parents <laughs> ran away. You understand? Uh, apparently, yes, like, no. things were, like, really, really hard mm. and they had to leave. Um, they had to leave Ghana. And so all of us were born outside of Ghana, okay. you know? And then we moved Where? back in, in 97. Where? Um, I was actually born in Nigeria. Oh, wow. Yeah, Dope. my dad my dad moved around a lot because he was a professor and mm. you know what I mean. So I've, I've experienced a lot of culture, okay? Mm. And we, they decided to come back, move back home in 97. So we arrived. As a matter of fact, we came on... On on uh, New Year's, first oh, wow. January. First January. Yeah, nineteen ninety seven. Yeah, ninety seven. And why were the airlines working? <laughs> <laughs> on the first. On the first year. Yeah. Yeah. Oh no no! I mean, it's it's. Yeah. Yeah, it's business as usual. Business as yeah, oh, yeah. business as yeah, usual. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so it was a culture shock for me. I was excited because we were going to meet a lot of relatives. Um, it was bittersweet because I'd left all our friends. Yeah. You know, we had come to a new place. There was just one TV channel. I hated it. I, I think... Points for... <laughs> like, for the first... <laughs> but yeah, you're not stuck coming with to GTV. think about it. I, GBC, you, as it I'll, was I'll say then. this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you know, I'll say this, though. Like I said, we're not privileged, but we're exposed to a lot of yeah. things that sort of stopped when we came to Ghana. Mm. Like... Um, we lived on a property that had like an orchard, okay. you know, and, but, but it's, it's interesting. It's an interesting thing I want to say mm-hmm. because it's also giving me a very different perspective about parenting as well, mm-hmm. you know, and I think my parents actually balanced each other out, especially, you know, when we're, when we're being raised because my mom is a lovable type of person. If something really fun happens to me right now, instinctively, I e- I'd either call my, my mom, my wife, or my brother. Okay. Your older Bob. brother? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. You, Bob. And it'd be crazy because she was the one who was a disciplinarian in the house. Even mm. though my dad was a stern one. Mm. My dad would shout, but that shouting was worse than a beating. Mm-hmm. You know, and Charlie, bro, we wet. Bro. They did, the way they would be stubborn there. Yeah. Fred, you know go Bob. Let me tell you how bad it was. I'm, I'm, I'm very good with my hands, right? By the time I was maybe seven, <laughs> I had <laughs> literally... It reminds me, it actually, I'm very good with my hands. <laughs> if you won't take that, yeah, I'm very good with my hands. <laughs> <laughs> See, bro. 
like I had a lot of practice as a kid, but like I think my parents did a great job trying to accommodate my energy. Mm. You understand? Because by the time I was like seven, I had literally taken apart every electronic like e- electronic device in the house mm. to try to figure out how it works. It was so bad. I remember um, my brother and I in our bedroom. I, I, I can't remember how I figured it out, but I think there was like a dresser. I found a way of like putting boxes or suitcases on it or whatever. At the time, my, my sis, um, the one after me, I, you know, I, I had her stand on a table or something to, to work the light switch. And I managed to take the bulb in one of the corners of the room from the socket because I had to try to figure out how it would work. And I stuck my fingers in there. Mm. Yeah, 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 Charlie. I was literally flung from one side of the room to yeah. the other. <laughs> and, yeah. my, and my hand was numb for days. My mom never noticed. I don't know how we managed to do that. But when everybody was in bed asleep, my big bro would heat water for kitchen. Then he could meow my hand and say, Charlie, <laughs> we do things though, like any time, bro. <laughs> like we could climb the ceiling of the house. Wow. Poppy, they come from job. We go see in, in ride, like probably a thousand, thousand five hundred meters away. Okay. And, you know, get back, you know, get down in time. Like, I don't, like. How much of it do you think is genetic? I think most of it. Because my mom, my mom said growing up, she was like, she was a girl who would go and beat the boys who beat her brothers. Mm. And it's hard to believe if you see her today. And my dad, my dad, like my dad has a lot of energy, even up till today. Like he's a very restless person. Well, to me, it's not baby far for. Mm-hmm. You understand? You're one of those people. So I think I had so much in me and I had a lot to express as well because I was very inquisitive. I, I think I still am, even yeah, today. So, yeah. so I just Sounds dabbled like, in. What, what's your, before yeah. you move, your dad is an archaeologist, a professor, of, and your mom? Oh, my mom is just a, an entrepreneur, a businesswoman. Okay, you know, cool. cool. So your VCR, let, let's go back to your VCR. Oh, no, no, was, I think it, was it multi-system? Was it a multi-system? No, no, no. no. Our neighbors, all our neighbors had e. a, uh, all, all, all our neighbors had the, the fancy stuff. Our, our stuff was even basic. So, so was yours E or T? I know the guy. You remember VCR? Yeah, we yeah, had D yeah, e from yeah, Europe yeah, and yeah, T yeah, from yeah, the yeah, Americas. Yeah, yeah. So, but if you had no, the no, multi no, 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 it was it was, it was E. It was E. It was yeah. E. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Most people in Ghana had E. It was E. It was E. But if you had the multi system, you were the. Things have changed. Yeah, you were you actually the having to buy a multi system VCR. Yeah, and I remember I was watching porn on my friends. This guy didn't put on my friends. VCR in their house in their li- in their living room. You have to you have to yank the cable and hide it. You know, <laughs> and which I um, rest, rest rest in peace, my Michael Kolomega. and his mom. We had his mom's car, and we had to take out the VCR. Oh, sorry, the tape, the tape, the tape from yeah. the v, 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 VCR. And I don't know if it, it was a grand dick. I'll never forget a grand dick. Yeah. You know. That, that was fancy though. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I don't know if you guys remember they used to call it deck. Deck. Yeah, 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 yeah. Video deck. <laughs> Video deck. Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> his <laughs> mom what came in and right when my, my guy took out the tape, that's when put it back inside and let's see what you are watching. Oh my goodness. Because his mom thought he 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 he, he had warned um Michael that no action films or anything so she thought it was it was an action, action film, film. Oh my but it was a, a different type of action yeah, but it was a porn <laughs> called hostage girls wow what? yeah you didn't remember the title oh, yeah 100 percent. that was my first porn that i watched and we kept on watching that same take for for like one year Wow! Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> yeah, crazy. yeah. Those, those tapes were hard that's to come wild. by. Yeah. If you find one, you treasure yeah, it. Yeah. Those is they call them blue film. Yeah, yeah blue yeah, film. Blue so, film. um, Kofi, um, Beat Menace. Um, going on. Um, chi- um, I mean, it, it's 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 crazy how I really you know, res- respect, you know, a couple of people who are around me, not a couple of people, like almost everybody who is around because I wouldn't keep someone around who <laughs> I don't see or I don't respect. Mm. And, but I never ever tell them how dope they are, you know. So, Kofi is a dope human being. You sure? 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean. So, some people might disagree. Um, November, <laughs> November, December. You helped me on this issue. You have been there before, where you travelled with me to go and see these copyright guys who were messing with me. Mm. You went with me and and you kept on. You would pick my calls every single time, you know. So yeah, I have to. And many people know you. In the industry, I hate using that word when it comes to entertainment in Ghana, but in the industry, and they know how dope you are, but they haven't told you, but they would say it's behind your back. So, I'm um, on behalf of all the people in the industry. You know, we have to give you your flowers because you have done. If you clap, some, I tried, I tried. Yeah, you, yeah. yeah. Charlie, thanks, man. Yeah. I mean, I try to do what I can. Um, obviously, not to impress anybody but i feel if there's something i can do yeah in whatever circumstance i just have to do you understand and i, I think that's also something i took from my mom yeah you know y you are a recording engineer yeah if i say mention one memorable session that you have ever been in wow that's going to be a hard pick because oh, i've actually i've had many first like also. one that that would 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 be etched in your um, mind for a long time. There are quite a few. That's a tough question. Okay, it's like okay, give, give us one top 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 artist that you were in the same room with. Wow, there are quite a few. Tony Allen. Okay, give us five. Oh wow. Ebo Taylor. Oh, Ralph Kakari. I don't know Ralph Kakari. Um, he invented the technique of playing bass. Mm. In, uh, as part of CG High Life. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I mean, um, he's a brick, Charlie. We need to start writing our stories and we need to mm. start celebrating our heroes. Mm. I, I, I was just that guy. You see, growing up, eh, my parents did my biggest year, which, and I explain why I say it, was they never raised us to speak any Ghanaian language which was very unfortunate. But there was, a, there was a silver lining. There was a good side to it. In the sense that, I mean, I, ca I can speak for myself, right? So when we came to Ghana, my dad, my dad is a royal. He comes from mm. like a very crazy royal family. Mm. My mom too is also a royal. And it was problematic because I couldn't, none of us could speak or understand Fanti. None of us could speak or understand Bono. None of us could speak or understand Chi. Mm -hmm. And we're in Ghana, uh, sorry, in, in Accra. Yeah. And... We know they speak or understand Ga. So it was a weird space to be. Yeah. However, everybody speaking Chi would speak Asante Chi. Mm. You understand? And the school I was in, I went to UPS, University Primary. Lego. Okay. They were teaching us Equapim Chi. You know, and my mom was trying to teach us Fanti at home. My dad was trying to teach us some Bruno. So my tree till this day is funny. But I write tree better than I speak it. Mm. Right? But it gave me, I, I'm a very analytical person. And I can say without a shadow of a doubt that I understand tree better than some people who were born speaking it and who speak tree better tree than I do. Wait, I, so are you saying your IQ level is high? No, 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 no. Bec I had, see, I, I came in, you know, the middle of the ending, the end of Form 1. By the time I was in Form 3, as part of my BEC, I had to write an essay in Chi. Mm -hmm. oh, wow. So I had to find ways and means of sort of encoding the language. And my dad, on his way, like driving us to school, you see these trotros who stop in Nyami Betre, and he would teach us how to pronounce it. And, you know, so he also did his bit. He would close at, at 2, 2 p.m. After like a 30 minute break or like an hour's break, he would go for three classes. Intensive for like two years. So I hey Charlie, I, the way I, they, I, they hate Ghana, eh? you have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> At some point, we actually felt our parents moved back because they wanted to punish us for being naughty kids, you know. Mm. But but um, maybe some way. So the mm. thing you describe, honestly, I won't take credit for it. I'd I'd give credit to my mom. My mom is just that kind of person who she's a very empath, like um, yeah. she has empathy. You know what I mean. And I think it's a little too much sometimes because yeah. every time me and I'm they fight. She's the kind mm. of person where if like it be in the last five CDCF, she could take give somebody. She be those people some. Yeah. So I mean, growing up, I remember we had lots of helps at home. My mom would make sure they went to school. Um, we have at least four or five house helps who have like PhDs now. 
Mm. What? Yeah, yeah, no kidding. Like we, bro. For me, at, for a, at <laughs> any point in time in our house, right? <laughs> house help. I've got, bro. People, <laughs> the house helps from your house all have PhDs and masters. Me, my house help was a was well, the well, first well, well, woman no, 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 who broke on. my virginity. <laughs> 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 Somebody has a lot of trauma they have to deal to with. Naomi, wherever you are. Point of correction. Point of correction. <laughs> that came out wrongly. Not all of them have PhDs. But yeah, but they are, most of they them. Are I think one or two have like PhDs. But that's amazing. Though. Things. See, uh, and, and wait, my mom caught us. Her, my that my grandma caught us her having sex. Oh my goodness! Wait a <laughs> second. At once. <laughs> Wow! At once, like, but you be bad boy chill. No, it became a whole thing. It became a whole thing. Be like, people from my hometown had to come to Accra with band. Wow! Why? Because they, my grandma had seen Naomi having sex with but, her grandson. But Naomi was young, old, much older. Way older. She had a kid. Wow. How much was the age gap? Like. Over 10 plus. Who started it? Naomi, obviously. Of course. Like Naomi. How old were you then? I I can't remember, but I was in my teens. Wow. Or mm. early... Yeah, teens or early... Teens. So do you think you were coerced or... I was co coerced because she said my Hello. goodies were, you know, good. <laughs> Charlie, that'd be... That'd be something. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah, one hell of... Yeah, 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 so back back, back to your... No, no, no. I mean, you can't just switch <laughs> up and then... We can't just wow. skate over yeah, that. Yeah, shouts down on me where, wherever you are. But so you guys were having multiple sessions? I think we had sex like three, four times. Was and, she married? Did she have felt, a boyfriend? No, no, she wasn't married, but yeah. I know that she But had. she was a single mom. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then, Charlie. you know, when, 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 when my mom died, they brought her to you know, help us in, in, in the house. There. That would have been awkward. Because I didn't know sex then. That would have mm. been awkward, eh? But peop, people will say that was her molesting me, but... What do you think? It was cool. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to be serious, man. You know, you, know, you know what's funny? You see, back in the day, I can't remember what paper mm. it was, whether it was Daily Graphic or something. There was this lady, Nanama advises you. Yeah, mm. I remember Where that. people go and, right... And, and Auntie Adiza. Yeah, there was actually was yeah, yeah it was, was uh, uh, anti yeah, 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 yeah. yeah this yeah. sounds like something yeah. you know somebody <laughs> would yeah, 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 yeah so so how was okay so your house elves now are well off uh, unlike so, mine so, so, some of them not not just in ghana alone you know mm. and we it was a thing like i said we're not like really well to do but i guess we're privileged considering setting things yeah. right now i i can admit that but i mean there were times when maybe my mom would feel like, every once in a while, not every once in a while, it was actually fairly regular. Mm. A regular uh, occurrence when, for the house, always there's, there were other, like, extra niggas. You know, well, mm. other people's kids or relatives we my parents would take care of or, you know, and it gets to a thing of, okay, such and such a person doesn't have good shoes. You have new sneakers. Give it to that person because, you you know, oh, wow. you know what I mean? Yeah, that's, that's a kind of, mm. you know, not sharing stuff per se, but like, yeah, like they always had to provide or mm. Was be that something a, for somebody else. A culture shock for you? No, but Nigeria and Ghana, we are like. No, but similar. not just even then. Even like everywhere, like like I said, my mom is just that one person. Mm. So we even have, like, I there are people I call cousins who literally grew up with us who are not mm. blood. Mm. You know why I'm I'm saying because I think. I experience uh, culturally. Mm. Sometimes w we may feel like it's an isolated incident. But you remember Mami AJ yeah, yeah. from last season? Yeah. Exact same experience. Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Actually, yeah. oh, wow. Yeah, right. yeah, 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 yeah. And so, uh, several yeah. other people yeah, yeah, experience yeah, this yeah. where they, they feel like my mom is doing all of this. But I think I just wanted to pinpoint it because I think culturally, the ones who make it out mm. are generally expected to be the 
responsible they're responsible for the family no that's true Ex- extended family wise yeah. so that's why you are finding relatives other people's ch- you know but even, running around but taking even your sneakers people who are not related by blood yeah mm. you understand like yeah. i said yeah. even house helps and things you yeah. understand like it you know we that's the sort of upbringing that's the one thing i wanted to also hone in on before you we forget and move on mm. to other things but that's a peculiar thing mm. i know maybe one or two other people who have make sure their house helps get mm-hmm. educated while they are living with them. Mm. But the extent of PhD and stuff I've never heard of before. Masters and I think one or two PhDs. Yeah. Mm. What do you think it is about your mom that made her want those people to reach as far as that level of education? Have you ever talked to her about it? No, I have. And... My mom is a very Christian person. I am not I don't consider myself religious even though I was raised in a Christian, you know, I, my dad went through his bits at some point he was a traditionalist at some point he was a total yeah, atheist sorry. and then he became criff. Mm. And then he became unbothered and then criff again. But my mom has always been criff. So I mean the earliest memories of like oh say, let's say a prayer before we go to bed, that was my mom. You know? And not to say I don't believe in the existence of God, because a lot of Ghanaians just equate, oh, I'm not religious. Just you know, Jean, not, I mean, yeah, yeah. no, I've seen like, you know, the manifestation of a lot of stuff. Jesus oh, Christ. Both, both <laughs> right, right and wrong, like literally. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I do not doubt that. Yeah. I just don't think religion saves me, period. See. But my mom is a very Christian type person. Yeah. And do, she, do you guys argue over, over religion, Christianity? Kofi, you have to go to church. Oh, no, no. Those ones, they happen. Yeah. I mean, um, she celebrated her... My parents celebrated their 40th wow. anniversary. Shoot. Um, shoot. Shout shout to, shout to them. Um, yeah. Last month. Wow. 40 and years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's as and long as we've been alive, basically. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and she... <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, and she just felt that the right thing to do was for... She didn't even tell me. She told my wife. She literally begged my wife to try and tell your husband so that she can join me, can join me for church. And I was late. But, you know, I sat at the back of her and, you know, she was, I think it was pr- praise and worship or something. And, you know, she turned and saw me and the look on her face was just to die for. Wow. You know, yeah, I, it was a big oh, deal. When I was getting married, oh, when uh, my wife is not religious, you know. Oh. Yeah. yeah. She's Ghanaian? Yeah, 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 yeah she okay. is. She's is, she is Ghanaian. And I remember getting married. Our mother's ganged up. <laughs> Shelly. Then come cry, put one at top some crying pa. So we had to do like a one hour church service as part of it. Because it was like a garden, you know, we had like a Did you get married in Ghana? Yeah, in Ghana, in Ghana. You met your wife in Ghana? Yeah, I mean tell you that's another story. My wife and I I've known her since like ninety eight, ninety seven. So right around when you moved back? Yeah, shortly after. Okay. And we're neighbors. Interesting. She lived she lived uh sorry, she lived three houses away from me. But we're not friends. You're we're seven years old at this point. When? You sorry? were seven when you came back. You s- no, no, no. I wasn't seven. No, no, no. no. I, I came by. Uh, I, I, hmm. You came back in 97. Seven. 97, yes. Yeah, but oh, but you were in your teens then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Early teens. And um, we're never friends. But we knew of each other. She claimed she didn't know me. But I'll, I'll let, I'll let mm. that pass. But I knew, I knew of her. We're in the same school. We're not friends, we're neighbors. And then we went to secondary school. She went to Motown, I went to Premper College in Kumasi. Okay. But she came to tech, we're in the same university, same hostel, same faculty, different departments. And she used to come to my room for parties. Interestingly, we became, I think the first real conversation we had was after I graduated and I was a TA. Wow. Yeah, and her best friend at the time came to copy music from me. Oh, on a pen drive? No, no, sorry. I'll backtrack. The first real conversation we had was when the first one was I went to visit her in her room. Because, yeah, this be your neighbor. You and I be cordial. Yeah. And it was a thing of any time I had a meet time, I for reintroduce myself. I was like, we fucking chick to be this. <laughs> like, what the fuck? You understand? Like, yeah. I know you. Anyway. Yeah, and... <laughs> The first time I visited her in her room, she was listening to D'Angelo, uh, the Voodoo album. 
Oh, and I was like, oh, that's a really dope album. And I was talking about the album. She was shocked. She was like, you know D'Angelo? Like, yeah. I was like, yeah. yeah. Like, I love that album so much so mm. that I actually found the guy who produced some of the songs and recorded it. Russ Elevado. Yeah, that's mm. how crazy the Voodoo album was to me. And all of a sudden, yeah, that was it. And we didn't do much talking until after uni. And I was a TA and her friend came to my room to copy music because I was a guy you would come to to copy m- music, TV shows and things like that. And then we had a conversation and then I started my first business shortly after. I had an office in Osu. She came by with her cousin who I think at the time she was seeing my business partner or they had a thing or they were just friends. I can't remember what it was. But we, I created a small studio. You came there now? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So she came there. We're spending time and then Everybody left. We're just there talking for hours. Then we grabbed some food at Frankie's. And then you're like, okay, yeah. So we called it a night. Had to leave. And I realized, oh, she's my neighbor. Snap. So we... We rode together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was it. She took my number. Like, like, did you guys hug? Did you guys kiss? Like... No, no, no. no. It wasn't that. It was just like... Here's a funny thing. Majority of my friends have always been women. Mm. So like always having girls or yeah, I don't like women friends. Yeah, majority of my friends are women. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I I don't I I don't have ain't like really no 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 no. So interestingly, like I never try because me and you go fight right now. Back oh then. no no that that be normal. Yeah, you back understand? then I was fighting like I'm, and I still do fight. You know, like not fight fight. We say like you know you what get I mean. Into yeah, it. yeah yeah yeah. So I, I, so for I, me it was just like another brick in the wall, so to speak. You understand? And after like spending time speaking of you know for a while, I realized, oh, she's actually really cool. And I realized like, oh, it will be on Penu Hassan. Mm. So she, you mm. understand what I mean? She knew like trouble for those of you. Don't yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, it was just it, it was what it was. You mm. understand? We exchanged numbers. I didn't see the need to call. You know, probably an hour, a year, a year and a half later, so day at day house afternoon time at the play game. Video game. I can remember it was Dev Jam Five for New York. Mm. Dev Jam Vendetta. Yeah. I remember mm. that video game. And my phone rang, and it was her. I was like, "Why should they call me?" So I no pick. We should call again. And I answered, and she was like, "Is your house the house with the monkey?" <laughs> <laughs> she said she'd come visit me at their house. Why, Why monkey? You, mon- monkey. You got, you had a monkey in your house. Our neighbors used to keep a monkey, but they didn't used to treat it well. So they used to come run to our house because when they come on a house, they get. <laughs> chop and things. So a lot of people thought it was our monkey, yeah. but it was actually our neighbors. Yeah. So I said, no, our house is not a house with a monkey. It's my neighbor. But I don't know. Sometimes the monkey is in my house. If the so. mon- mon- monkey is here now. <laughs> so if you see the yeah, monkey, yeah, yeah. then yeah. And it was, it was a strange thing to ask. Like, I haven't spoken to you in like a year. This is the first time like you're calling, calling me, asking you my house. But, but actually, that's dope, right? Yeah, like someone, yeah. like you are giving monkey a banana and <laughs> someone's <laughs> <what is coming. laughs> <laughs> oh god the innuendo is peak today i know right i know what that, that was <laughs> actually strangely poetic yeah but you know the ritual he had before the podcast started that's what that's what that's is what's inspiring us today. i see i was wondering okay okay now it's beginning to make sense <laughs> yeah charlie oh monkey and banana yeah okay. yeah so so sh- she found the house yeah, she found a house. So I was like, you know, I'm not sure there. if <laughs> it's actually in my house because so I had to explain. She came to my house and she came to then, my house every day for a year. Oh, literally. I actually thought um, <laughs> he, he was he was going to give us your filler. <laughs> he came to my house and no, but that's a big my deal. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. I mean, because every she, day for a year. Yeah, like a year. Wow. Give or take. Yeah, she Yo, spent but time. Fred, I won't hesitate to say this. I, I think I met his wife because of because of her older sister. Or yeah, something. Shirley. Yeah, Shirley. Yeah, and they look alike. Right? Yeah, they look alike. Yeah. Yo. Yeah. Beat Menace's wife is one of the prettiest human beings that I've really? ever seen, and. She's not lying. So calm. <laughs> yeah, she's really cool. Very, very calm. Not yeah. cool, calm. And you have to see her. Yeah. No, I mean, I think she's a very interesting person. 
just the way you've described her yeah. so far. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The way she moves and for yeah. her to out of the blue make at that and, and also coming to your house every single day. No, at the, the time year. at that time she had decided that okay, I'm going for this man. Yeah, possibly. Yeah. I think, I think she had made the decision. Yeah. Sounds so maybe, like a so maybe she person. was she was keeping tabs on him yeah. by going to his house every she, single day. She she would deny that though. Yeah, I am I am I think so because if a woman sees an apple <laughs> and they want to go and pluck the apple, they will do everything. Mm. Every second, every minute, every period, mm. well, throughout that cycle. Well, I, I will say something until about until they get her. apple. She's a very intentional person, you Bob, and yeah, she so knows the front. Mm. That's that's why we. Yeah, get. yeah, true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like if something be no, that, yeah, that's exactly what I mean. Mm. Yeah. That day coming to his house, she had decided. Yeah, this is it. This is it. No, at the time, I think she said she was just home when she was bored. That's because she, because nah, she quit nah, her nah, job. Nah, 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 nah. we be like, we like, we won't, we won't, take that one. She's too intentional of a person for that to have been yeah. some off the whim. Oh, yeah. I'm bored at home. I don't know yeah. where to go. Let me find so, coffee. So, so cut to the chase. How was the session with Tony Allen like? Oh well, we've had quite a few stuff rehearsals studio recordings or just like conversations really very calm collected easygoing guy mm. you know what i mean go roll up you know you know yeah. they play with him so Coco. i have to ask this hmm. how did you get tagged with nerd when you're growing up i was a backpacker i was in like the popular kid in school though okay but i was a guy you would need to speak to to get certain things done you know, what's and a, I went a through. Backpack, I know backpackers though. and like, nerd, they, like, there's a distinct, there's a yeah, nuanced yeah. distinction. Like yeah, a, yeah. a backpacker, someone with a backpack filled with tribe called Quest. And, oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, okay. yeah. So, okay. Um, <laughs> I guess there was an element of coolness, you okay. know, there because I went through various LL phases. Cool like, I went through various phases growing up. I mean, at some point before uni, and I think after uni, I mean, I. You know, when you do music, you're, you're cool. Yeah. yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? But deep inside, for me, it was just like yeah, yeah, one of those things. Yeah. You know what I mean? So we introduced you at a, as a multidisciplinarian. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Can you list, just mention all the things that you do? Then I, 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 do I do quite a few things. Some things are not as active. Mm -hmm. um, like okay, my mom, so your main things? Yeah, my main things, design advertising, mm -hmm. brand consultation, and brand audits together. Music production, so that means writing. I write a lot. I compose, I arrange, I engineer, I mix, I master. Mm. Um, 2D animation, 3D animation. Oh, wow. um, I'm an acoustician. I do like ac acoustic designs and I do interiors. I've done a lot of consultation for Clifton Homes, used to be my client for like three years. Okay. So I helped mm. them design like three of their properties. Um, For what purpose? Like as in the sound? No, 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 no. The actual building. Okay. Like they, I worked with the architects to like sort of finalize like the conceptual idea. And once it went to the structural engineers and it was, yes, the one in uh, Clifton Court. Um, which one? There's one at East Legon, one at Airport. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, the East Legon one, I think there are two structures and then the one at Airport. Uh, at the airport that's intriguing yeah so film as well okay. and also mm -hmm. law so it's like a, an intersection between all these um, yeah. practices so really if out of all the list that you just gave us mm. you have to choose like let, let's say three it's impossible you didn't even m mention your sound side your audio side yeah yeah, yeah. not to sound design and all that stuff I can't choose here's you the thing choose. when I have an idea, it manifests as mm. any of these things. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and I'm an obsessive compulsive. Okay. When, when I love something, I try and understand everything there is about, to it. about it. Okay. So that actually kept me from trouble for many years growing up, you know, because I was, like I said, I went through a, sp a period when I was like a really bad kid. You know, and my mom was definitely the inspiration because she she saw that I was a creative 
person. Like I said, like the VCR story, if I don't even finish. Like she would watch something, she likes maybe a dress or a clothing somebody's wearing, she would pause it and have me sketch it and she would cut and sew it. Mm. So mm. I learned how to cut and sew before I was 10. Mm. Yeah, 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 I had a cut sew, but no be small. I haven't done it in a long time, but yeah. You know what I mean? So I'll give that credit to my mom because she would be like, oh, it's such a nice dress. I know you can, you know, I know you can, you can sketch it and add your bits to it. That's how it started. And then you go to school, Charlie, comic books, you know, I'd save my money and there's only as much, com there are only as much, uh, as many books as you can save to buy. How many of your siblings are like you? Mm -hmm. My, the brother, of the last but one. He okay. produces, he raps. Okay. And he take hide me for years. Oh. Please, drink your drink. You, you wouldn't believe, oh, Chai, thank you. You, you know, you know Nival, right? Yeah. Alvin. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. BBNZ. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, so we did uni together. We one day come and say, ah, but you, your bro, the rapper, you know, can't tell me. And I think Alvin is actually one of the dopest rappers around. People don't know that. Off the top. Really? Bro. Alvin raps? You know his brother, Brian, raps? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Charlie. I didn't know Nave was rapping. Nave was lethal. And he's the kind of guy who, like, off the top, you understand? He go rap. Maybe my levels mess up small. Oh, Charlie, bro, take him again. Oh, I don't write that more. Then for kick another 16. See, <laughs> I was listening, you know, uh, K Tramine? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That group. Mm -hmm. The guy, they rap like what Nave used to do, just like when we the hang back in the day. You mean K Tramine, like the the duo, the K Tranada and Amine. Amine. You know okay, yeah, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. You know they have like a, a joint yeah, project. Yeah, interesting yeah, fact yeah, about yeah, Nave. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, discovering yeah, Nave is bloody lethal. So you recorded stuff with him? Oh yeah, a lot of stuff. Where are you hiding this stuff? I shall say in if you go get. Um, there's a uh, hard drive. See, I'm, I'm, as soon as we get off, I'm calling him to pester him about this. This is now Neval is a bad ass rapper. And the intriguing thing about him was he never had to, to like, write. Oh, so, like, Jay-Z level kind of Exactly. Thing. That's what I'm talking about. And, you know, when you have, like, a really good rapper who has the perfect mix of integrity and commercial appeal, he just had it, like, effortlessly. It was... I'm surprised. He, I'm, I'm, wonder, I'm not surprised. I'm wondering why he never pursued it. I'd like to I'm, 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 I'm sure... I could have been many things. He's okay. actually somebody we need to get on the show at some yeah. point. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. he's a brilliant guy. He's yeah. a brilliant guy. Yeah. Wow. Um, we don't get yeah. to speak as much, and he's he's super busy. He's doing like a million and one things, and so I understand. Yeah. But Charlie. Yeah. So so um, if you have to choose, like, but if you have to choose three, I can't. You can't. No, 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 no. I'll be okay. lying to myself. So, so let's, for me, so it's an expression. Like it's a mode okay. of expressing myself. So we will we will decide to pick which one we want to talk about then. Okay. Yeah. Cool, 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 cool. Um, what is so with with audio? Um, well, I I know you for audio. You have worked with so many artists. You've mm. worked for so many. You've worked on films, mm. right? You have scored films, mm -hmm. you know, and all that. Um, I want to ask you this: what is what is it about analog mm -hmm. that makes people go gaga? Like, what is it about analog? Because digital is now so dope, so clean, so modern. So <clears throat> why do people still yearn for that analog feel? It's something that I don't get. If back then we had digital, mm. do you think anyone would would prefer analog? Like, um, First off, I think it's a thing of personal preference. You understand? You, you, you get what I talk about. But you can use digital, like, latest modern gadgets to get the sound that you want to get because there are, you know, um, plugins and, you know, emulations yeah, and all that. Yeah, I do agree to an extent. Okay. It's true and it isn't. I love digital for two key things. Affordability. Instant recall and flexibility. Thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, but even the affordability bit, Charlie, it's a bit of a slippery slope mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. there are sound cards that are digital sound cards that have only two inputs to record two microphones or line inputs mm -hmm. that cost $10,000. Yeah. Mm. So that's debatable, right? 
Why do I like analog? I love analog because the shortcomings of the format was as a result of the actual medium that was used to capture the format. I grew up watching The Sound of Music and My Fair Lady. Mm -hmm. These are movies, films that my mom loves even till today, mm -hmm. right? Do you know there are Blu-ray versions of it? You can get it in 8K. Yeah. Yeah. You can't do the same for digital. You need to understand okay. one thing. Digital, every digital technology is based on a, an approximation. That yeah, but we are going forward. We are not... It's still a problem. Lesson. No. Development doesn't mean better all the time. Okay. In yeah, fact, fair. as a matter of fact, just six months ago, researchers decided that the safest format to save digital files for archival purposes be tape-based hard drives. Mm. Mm. Okay. So why are we going back? You, you get what I'm trying to say? You need to understand. Okay, let me simplify it. And I'll go, I'll go back to film, right? Digital versus analog. Mm -hmm. And we're going to discuss a few, a few concepts. Mm -hmm. Basically, we all know the VHS tape. Yeah. Right? There was an early, okay, I won't say early, early, but there was a, an audio format known as ADAT, which was yeah. essentially yeah, yeah. an optimized VHS tape yeah. that was designed to carry audio, not video. Mm. Right, and each tape could could accommodate eight channels. So if you had to record a band with a V um, with an ADAT, ADAT setup, you had to sync multiple decks so that when you press record, all start at the same time. When you press stop, it stops. So track one to eight, drum, bass, da 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 da, -da kick, snare, da -da 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 -da. then you go to the next deck. You continue keyboard. Uh, lead vocal, backing vocal, bass guitar, electric guitar, piano, da 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 You could cascade or link several of these machines to get as many as 24 channels, mm. right? Now, like I said, it was basically VHS technology that was tweaked and optimized for audio. Mm -hmm. It was made by a company known as Alesis. You yeah, probably know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alesis, yeah. They invented the ADAT format. Now, here's an interesting thing. ADAT came way before the audio CD. And it recorded audio at 16 bit, 48 kilohertz. Mm -hmm. Do you know one of the main reasons the audio CD format became very popular globally? It was because it was an answer to solve piracy. Not necessarily because the technology was better. better. Okay. Because if ADAT was able to record at 16 bits, 48 kilohertz, technically, it means the sound quality was superior to the audio CD, which was 16 bit, 44.100 kilohertz. So let that sink in. Yeah. You need to understand there's always corporate interest mm -hmm. in um, um, when it comes to commodities that are consumed widespread. Because back in the day, you play from a vinyl, you get the two cassette decks, and you can just press record. And they were losing revenue. Because don't forget, the first commercial CD album release, still one of my favorite albums today, but I still believe if it was recorded analog, it would have sounded even better. Um, um, Dire Straits, Brothers in Arms. It was released in 1985. Okay. That was the I first commercially Street. released like album on like on digital CD. format, right? Okay. Right? A, that was still in use till like the mid-90s. But they would always... Like the final format would either go to, uh, would usually come to CD. So they were even reducing the quality. Now, you need to understand one thing. In every digital system, it works using zeros and ones, like an approximation of mm -hmm. sampling. The idea is, okay, what does the human being hear or see? What's the spectrum of the average human sight? Like you perceive vision. Right? What's, how much light can the average eye take? Okay, let's make sure the format accommodates at least what a majority of people can perceive. Mm -hmm. That's the idea. So it means no matter how wide the bandwidth of information any digital format is capable of capturing or saving or transmitting, there's still a cap. There's a glass ceiling somewhere. It's not the same with analog. The actual capture device of the analog is what the shortcoming it's, it's where you would have the shortcoming, depending on what format you're using. Mm. Analog is infinite. Okay. 
life and the perception of life in itself is infinite, literally. And that's why I'll always take analog over digital. But how... Now, okay, yeah, finish. Yeah, yeah sorry, sorry. But, but how does... So um, if, like, in sound, you know, the mm. music, entertainment, mm. you know, we make music for people to consume. Yeah. And these people who consume, uh, like, how do they hear the difference? And, like, I don't think the consumer, the, the, the basic or the mere consumer can detect the difference <laughs> in quality. It's a simple answer, but not a simple, not an easy one. I'll say a yes and a no. Mm -hmm. We train our senses. If, okay, so a group of researchers took MP3 files. MP3 is a loss, lossy format, yeah. right? They created a software. You can actually Google it and, you know, you can, it's online. And it took like a regular MP3 file. And in the process of converting from a lossless format, like a wave or an, a CAF or an mm -hmm. AIFF AI 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 to encode into MP3, they could split the extra information that was being let go as part of the conversion process. And they actually created separate files for those. And you can actually listen to what you're not hearing in the MP3. Mm. So if an entire generation, in the land of the blind, the one-eyed is king, mm -hmm. if an entire generation grew up listening to MP3 music, they'll never, see, I can tell you, they'll never appreciate high fidelity sound. There's a reason why all of a sudden, especially after lockdown, Dolby Atmos has been a, a format that I became, personally, I became aware of when James Cameron's avatar came out in like, right. was it 2012 or 2013? Yeah. yeah. That's how many years ago? It'd be right now music, they try to adopt them. Absolutely. Why? Because we have interactive video. We have VR, we have virtual reality, we have augmented reality. Now you need to understand, one of my favorite video directors of all time, Alfred Hitchcock, he said the mm. secret to his filmmaking is actually his sound design and the score. That's 50% of yeah, the experience sound. of watching any film, bro. Yeah. yeah, sound adds a whole lot. Exactly. But there's a reason why now they are trying to take these technologies for listening audio, listening pleasure. You understand? So you need to understand that our senses grow as far as you let them grow. Mm. Can people hear the difference? No. Why? Because they've been nurtured in a space... Um, where they are exposed to listening to poor quality audio. I remember the first time I listened to like an optimized vinyl system, right? You go weak. You play like a highly pressed vinyl, a high density vinyl, like the, you know, vinyls are pressed in gauges. Mm -hmm. And in grams. Do you, you know how they do I'm vinyls? I'm following. <laughs> yeah, okay. Okay. The, yeah, but I don't know it? how they do So, vinyls. So basically so the I'm thickness, lost. okay? Yeah. The thickness of the plate yeah. okay. varies. Okay. Most are like 120. That's inferior. The high end plates usually are like 180 grams. And they weigh quite a ton. It's, okay. it's pretty heavy. Mm. Now, it's a very, very precise engineering feat for you to actually... There's something called a cut, a cutting lathe. That's what you you create. What you know, uh, what, what is the glass master? So it's mm. basically like a copper or a silver yeah. disc that the first grooves yeah. actually cut to. Then that is in is is created. A, a stamp is created from that. So it presses like the the molten vinyl, and then you you know what I mean. It's yeah. a very precise process, right? Yeah. If you find a properly pressed vinyl. You play it on a proper ten table. A lot of the vinyl players our parents had were very were, they were consumer systems, really. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The first time I heard a record I knew played on an optimized system. You were hearing frequencies that you guy, never heard. my my eyes literally lit. Charlie, my eyes just tear up. <laughs> it's a beautiful thing. Yeah. And it's fine that not everybody will get to experience that. For me, it's experience, you know? Mm. There's something Panji says, which, which I've borrowed and stolen from him. Feeling is believing. Yeah. You understand? When somebody is convicted about something, you know if you change your mind. Mm -hmm. And that's what it is. Mm -hmm. and, and I think um, society has evolved to a point where we are not made to feel. We are not made to feel things. Could and that's problematic. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, It has to be. Well... I mean, 
I want to ask a question that is layman, very layman. Mm. Um, I get what you're saying because socially, that's cookie cutter stuff. They need to make fast food. Yeah, yeah and that's yeah. fine too. Yeah, 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 yeah and that's but that's fine too. I, I'm trying to ask this question about audio since you guys are deep into the weeds about this. Some of the things that I read or heard about about audio is the experience of playing a record in reverse. A lot of right, times, right. I don't know if you're yeah yeah, 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 that you can hear the uh, even back then it became well yeah, not back then but bone thugs and no no <laughs> early they were saying that if you play the yeah, yeah, songs yeah. in reverse you hear the devil uh, yeah, yeah. You know. even Lucifer from Jay Z yeah. Lucifer yeah. Yeah. they're yeah. like if you play it in reverse when they were trying to tag him with the Illuminati mm. stuff what is I guess my question is what is the technicality behind that what is what is the real deal with playing records in reverse and does it really actually mean anything or it's just some, you know, boogeyman thing they're talking um, about? I think it's a bit of both. We can't sit here and deny that esor- uh, like the esoteric stuff does not exist, right? Okay. But overzealous religious people also always find a way to create certain things. Now, I remember when the whole Bone Thugs thing happened because mm. I was a big Bone Thugs and Harmony fan. Bone and Biggie, Biggie. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, Bone Thugs is like that's the one. That's the one on uh, Notorious. Yeah. Oh, white world yeah. to be a thug yeah. in Harmony. Yeah. yeah. Hey. The Bone Thugs thing. Wake up, wake up, wake up! Is the first of the crowd. Yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know. The last time I I am I am I did anything in reverse, I fell into a gutter. Really? With my car, I was reversing. <laughs> <laughs> So I guess that's not a good idea. Yeah, then. but <laughs> yeah. music has changed, man. Yeah, well, music maybe has. Kids I mean, this day don't feel that way, but mm, so you think yeah. it's a bit of both? I think it's a bit of both. I mean, I I fell for the Bone Thugs thing for a while. Yeah, those, those it, things it's circulating a, it's at a, it's the time. A it's a sham. It's a sham. Mm. Yes and a no. Here's why. Mm-hmm. I don't know about. I can't speak on that specifically. But, but if I'll they say were something. worshiping the devil, like they would have lasted longer than the. Short pro- the devil didn't give yeah, you long pre- week, you know? <laughs> short promises. <laughs> you know, oh my goodness. Uh, short so, promises uh, take you out quickly. Yeah. Um what I found disturbing because I had a copy of that album. Okay. I think I still even Crossroads? have it. Or it's, oh, it's, actually I own every bone. What was the name album. of the album? Um, something, something eternal. Yeah, yeah. Um, 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 oh I I I know I know the album. Oh I boy. know the album. Reflection Eternal mm. is, is, is Black by St- um, Talib Kweli. Talib Kweli. Talib Kweli. Right. Yeah, this was something, it's, something eternal. Yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah. But, but you know, Bone Thugs is the only group that, Chai, sorry, we had a group that, uh, you know, is one of the groups that made a song with Biggie and t- 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 Tupac. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, which one would you go for? Bone hey, Biggie, Biggie killed. Biggie, yeah. Biggie killed. No, no, no. I'm the no, dangerous. dangerous. Ain't get fucked up. No, no. That, you know, that record. Bang, what is, yeah, that's a classic. Yeah. 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 Violence. The pockets he entered Ted, in that yeah. track was crazy. Yeah, it's born and big. Mm, big, 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 big he killed it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so talking. You were so so. They had a Ouija yeah. board on there. Yeah, right? really? Yeah, 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 on the back of the the cover, like the inner. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a Ouija board. Yeah, but but you know what I mean. But but um, Kofi, if Okay, so I asked you a question about analog and digital, but would you rather be carrying even CDs in your arms right now? No, I never liked CDs. I'll say that. But wait, okay, so how mm. would you have consumed music mm. if we, like, wouldn't it be weird? Okay, let's say vinyls, like, see how huge they are. Charlie, it's a pain in the ass. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. so I, I mean... So I'm not hating, I'm not hating on yeah, the format. And, and I was the just... same, like, people talk about photographers, like, hey, I should film and they think it's cool. Yeah, film is cool, but we have instant, you know, cameras now where you can snap and... But they always get Like the to... one you no, have, no, no. yeah, it was pretty No, they, those existed. I mean, I had an instant camera when I was a kid. Yeah, but I'm talking about time. how people are the, going back into film. The Polaroid. Yeah, oh, okay, okay. Yeah, back yeah, the into film yeah. where you have to enter a dark room and process it. And, you know, you don't even have much space. 36 shots and you are done. But, you know, we talked about this with Francis Kokroko. Yeah. And he seemed a bit ambivalent about the experience. But I, I, I'll tell you maybe a, a, a different perspective. Mm-hmm. Mm. If I had the means to... The way that you guys are talking about audio, 
obviously when you're on the go out there in the world maybe you're going for a walk you can't carry mm. vinyl with yeah. you mm. so i would like to be able to have access to my itunes or whatever it is you mm. use spotify but when i come home i would love to have the i'm going to go search the 180 gram this is me vinyl that he's talking about because i want to play a whole different sound when I'm at home chilling, I'm not rushing anywhere. I don't need digital. I, I would like to experience something different. But so all the formats. But it's the same. I no, feel the sound. With, okay, tumble, wait. With the sound that on. you listen to mm -hmm. right now, with the deck, I know that you are into rap, into hip hop. Yeah. Like everything came after post. No, you know, I listen to it. know and you know. I think we're going to talk about, but this is a, an actually interesting thing that yeah. I found out about you. Mm -hmm. He's very into seventies music or some part of your twitter was your tweets were leading ah, to the, the bill with this no yeah here's a funny thing about me i listen to everything okay literally i, don't. I listen to a lot of things up until a certain point then i have not gone to the modern stuff you mentioned something about country music yeah i know country music inside out i can tell you who wrote certain songs where it was recorded really I, oh yes wow yeah yeah, yeah. it's when we I go, don't take when, it that far. Minor. When we when we go to reggae, we'll do the same. When we go to rock, we'll do the same. What kind of rock are you talking about? Then we talk about jazz. So, like, for me, I love digital because of the immediacy and the affordability. Mm -hmm. I have an optimized vinyl system. It cost me an arm and a leg. It took me years to, to put together, right? And I have an insane collection of records. <coughs> when you say it took you... You had to have it built or something that you had to seek out to purchase? Or to repair or something? To purchase, to repair. Um, mm. So I have a, a direct drive turntable. Okay. And so the right way to listen to vinyl properly is... You see tip, the stylus. Tip, tip for you, tip for you. The needle, the mm -hmm. stylus on your tone arm mm -hmm. yeah. would have to be either a moving magnet or a moving core technology. You'd have to choose one. I'm and lost. try and buy the best one. No, it's like a format. It's like, mm. uh, okay, so it's like XLR or Jack, okay, basically, okay, okay. right? In fact, my last, my it, DJ Rap Safe, we he order my last uh, stylus for me, mm. you know. May he rest Shouts, in peace. He rest yeah, in yeah, yeah. Peace. So you'd have to choose between a moving coil or a moving magnet, right? Okay. And there are lots of recommendations for different budgets, but usually when you go for certain brands, at setting price tag, you you realize that your base is tighter, you have less um, hiss and noise, flutter, echoes, and that sort of thing when you're playing. And even the design of the turntable is important. The best are the direct drives, the direct drive designs. Those are the types the DJs can use to scratch mm -hmm. because it's very, um, I would have to delve into science if I want to like really break it down. But you, you can adjust even the tone arm to make sure that at the exact point you drop, it actually plays from that milli, 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 millisecond. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. It affects... Zone in. Yes, right. yes. Now, depending on the stylus you use, whether I'm moving coil or moving magnet, there's something called a preamp. This is very important. A lot of people who play vinyl do not know of the preamp. What a preamp does is it amplifies over a thousand times the signal that is being read from the groove before, and you have to match the preamp to either a moving coil or a moving magnet. I had quite a number. I've just settled on one particular one because it literally has a switch where like I'll just choose moving coil or moving magnet, mm. and it sort of alters the electronics internally to optimize the sound. Now, it's from the output of that, you now go into your amplifier before it comes to your speakers. I can bet you choose your best song if I have the vinyl. I'll play there. You'd go for analog all the time. Mm. Nine out of ten times. And no, even the quality, speaker, like, yeah. the quality of your speaker is also important. The yeah, best yeah. are Rebin Twitter speaker, speaker designs with like a wooden horn. It's crazy. Some of them go way below human hearing. I have um, an old pair of Tanois that probably was made when I was still a kid. And it goes as high as um, 45 kilohertz. That's the sound dogs and cats here it goes way beyond human hearing so they've just expanded the bandwidth so that the most sensitive ears wouldn't miss out anything and if you can't hear as much you hear what you have to hear tell me my dog eh? the way he picks up sound dogs cats even whales i mean Yo. whales and things they communicate using radar it be frequency it's it's crazy i'm like you understand? wow 
Mm. No, but there are some humans who can hear. I wish I, I could, I could, I could hear. You know, certain things like that. You know, quick. Yeah, we need to realize that human beings have no restrictions whatsoever. We impose restrictions on ourselves, which can be a good thing. Okay, but the question you need to ask is, who does it benefit ultimately? Mm. Because think about it, right? Animals, if you detect the event of a natural disaster and then they migrate weeks mm -hmm. or months in advance, mm -hmm. then you just sit your house to play PlayStation <laughs> and tsunami go can't carry it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you, you assume you are the smartest and the brightest <laughs> of all creatures on earth. And I blame religion partly <laughs> because it's like God created man to take dominion and take care of all the plants of the earth. Charlie, <laughs> dogs and cats, they make more sensible decisions past human Oh, beings. yeah, 100%. Like, like your I, first I example, strongly, like how birds migrate. It's so bro, crazy. Yeah. Bro, bro. They know. Honestly, I feel like humans are the scum of the earth. Oh, yeah. Like a lot of, a Biggest lot of, scum. a lot of eco ecological degradation ended in just the two years human activities Stop. were paused during for COVID. a while during yeah. COVID. And that's something worth thinking about. Yeah. It's crazy because we can't amass this level of knowledge. And besides, I think we have actually regressed over time. Yeah. Because if you look at the wonders of the world, if you yeah. go to Ethiopia, you can go and see Lalibela, where they've precision carved, laser precision, yeah. elaborate temples, where like technology is safe, where we get to the Inugo Fiduam. If you mm. ask some, some questions, somebody's yeah. not seeing everything. I, I feel the birds, like we are here saying, yeah, this podcast is dope. I, mm. I feel the birds <laughs> have way to pop podcast and we are just bro, looking at them. Bro, it'd be crazy. But with the sounds that they are, yeah. the chaps, they are all communicating, like they are hosting, you know, Birdman or something. Mm. <laughs> Bird, so, Birdman is next. <laughs> <laughs> Birdman is next on. <laughs> what happened to that boy? The what happened to that Birdman. boy? Listen, yeah. But that was a jam and a half though. Yeah, yeah, that song yeah, was really yeah. good. I have a suspicion of That aspect of the human experience where it pushes you to learn, mm. to want to explore. Yeah. I feel like, and I don't know how you guys feel about it, that's why I'm putting the question out there, that technology somehow is rather finding a way to put a lid yeah. on that yeah. explorative yeah. nature. Yeah. I don't know. What do you think about that? Oh, 100%. Yeah. See, even... <laughs> you need to realize that a lot of corporations determine what becomes easily accessible to yeah. the masses right mm -hmm. now. It's nearly as if your lived experiences must be truncated or directed towards a very specific path, which may not serve my interest. It might be okay for you. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So here's the thing. Um, like you would ask yourself, in many societies, it is perfectly fine when certain religious people believe a certain thing mm -hmm. that defies logic mm -hmm. and sorts of shapes the direction of everything from policy, mm -hmm. education, mm -hmm. yeah, you, you can't help but ask yourself, okay, so at the end of the day, who is this benefiting? Am I the one? If the, the answer is no, then you have to reassess you know, your priorities. Like, for instance, uh, something that I, that, that I find really disturbing sometimes is how in certain parts of the world, you cannot grow your own food, even if you had the land and wanted to. I didn't know that. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's I know in they parts of don't Yankee, encourage it, but I no, didn't. No, but ask yourself this. So, um, I don't know if I told you about how there was a time I went to do like a full-on check and... Um, the doctor said he found pes traces of pesticides in me. And I, was, I panicked. Yeah. It was like, yours is actually one of the lowest mm -hmm. um, levels I've seen. And I said, you don't mean it. Now, this is crazy because my wife and I used to grow 98% of all the vegetables and herbs we used to consume for like five years. And we stopped. You understand? So I'd go to the, you know, you'd go to the market or go to the, the, the mall or wherever, and then buy your lettuce, your cabbages, your kale, your Swiss chards, whatever. It's just because of the pesticides they spray on them. Mm. And it's so wild that it has affected our mental faculties mm -hmm. that we do not question things that are obviously off. Like, for instance, your natural inclination, if you went to the grocery store, 
and you decided to get tomatoes, you wouldn't buy the ones that you've seen wormholes in there. Mm -hmm. You want the wholesome, fresh, you know, nearly glazed looking ones. But the reason most are not attacked by insects is because the insects don't like them. Because it's full of pesticides. Mm. That's very disturbing. When That's I was true. growing up, when I was growing up, yeah, yeah, smart. Yeah, yeah, true yeah. Too, yeah. When I was growing up, most then bananas. The next time I, I, go, I go to the market, I'm buying. <laughs> the it's the crazy. Yeah. 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 It's crazy because I was reading something that this was, I think, during COVID or something. You know, yeah. Charlie over Sabi, you find something, <laughs> something to do in that free yeah. time, right? I was reading something and somebody said, "Do you know all banana species that are natural?" have seeds in them. And then it hits me that kiddie time, yeah. if you chop yeah. bananas, yeah. when was the last Those time you bought black, bananas to see? No it's, more. it's crazy. Exactly. Yeah. No more. But you need to understand one wow. thing. The human body, and I don't want to even go into the quality of water and whatnot, because me now, I do my own research, you see some things, but a lot of things will be defended by scientists <coughs> because the very training or nurturing it's they flawed. received Yeah is meant or was built on that system. Yeah. You understand what I mean? Yeah. At a cellular level, if the human being is made up of about 70% water, it means the quality of water I consume every day is very important. Yeah. Think about it. Now, there's a lot of things about water that we take for granted. Like a lot of, there's a reason why in every African society, when there's a rites of passage, water always plays an important role and then some form of liqueur. Water carries and stores memory. Yeah. Science has actually discovered it. Like, if like there's a there's a depression in the floor and I pour some water and I write K for coffee, K for coffee with my finger, and you find a way of lowering the temperature so that it freezes and becomes iced and it's there for a while. You leave it to thaw. All I all I need to do is just like blow air on it. You see the impression of the K there. So it means genetically we are carrying the combined traumas, experiences, and everything on a cellular level in our bodies. Mm. Yeah. Now, the question is, why is it that... That's why water is controlled globally, heavily riddled with chemicals. Right now, even the plastic safe we they saw from the bottled water, the sachet one safe, you know, good. Once it's not BPA-free plastic and it's exposed to extreme temperatures either hot or cold. It's a known carcinogen. Which, but which brand of water do you consume? I have like a reverse osmosis system and it goes through like a filtration thing. Mm. That's what I... Yeah, at I home? Stop. Yeah, yeah, at home. Me, yeah, I but drink pure water. <laughs> oh, no, 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 I had to stop because even plastic has a taste. Okay. Yeah. When you left Go Yankee, you the Go Yankee wa. When you left Go Yankee, you realize say, the taste of the water be different, yeah. especially if you buy from bottled. So sometimes what mm. I do is when I'm going out, it's 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 a bit of a luxury too. But I have like glass flasks uh -huh. that I carry water from home. Yeah. But I I still consume uh, you know water that I buy from elsewhere. But I'm just saying that the world we know right. is not necessarily everything technologically is not necessarily designed to 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 keep you healthy or designed mm. taking into account the, your best interest that's right. basically what I'm saying so I'm somebody who questions a lot yeah. of things okay but over time I've learned to just let things yeah. go me, 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 I, me I always say that Charlie, Charlie, Charlie are dying slowly and I know that I know that plastics isn't healthy but Charlie the, the way I'll just bite it and that bit I'll I'll play play with it in my mouth for a while before I <laughs> spit it out spit it out and I'll drink the water you know <laughs> and, and we, we don't we don't we don't crazily we like we don't we don't like pay attention to even the sorts of um, pigment or paint that is used to you know brand the sachet yeah. say. Hey, some mm. are back in the day, well, not now. Charlie. You would just rub it and you see the paints come, come off. off. Exactly. Yeah. Like, it's it's crazy. Um, You being, like, you spoke about vinyls and, you know, the guitar, mm. analog and all that. Um, You know how streaming is? It's a big thing nowadays. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, we have the Apples, we have the Spotify's. And you know how artists are, are doing everything for plays, so it's or mm. click so they can make some, you know, coins, mm. you know, from their work, which mm. is understandable and I do support. But what would you say about, you know, streaming farms? Well, it is what it is, right? Um, the end always justifies the means. 
we, we live in an era where everything is determined by social capital. You understand what I'm saying? So I don't, I wouldn't fault people for wanting to go that far. Mm. Besides, streaming generates petty income. Yeah. Okay. Um, I mean, you need to understand that every territory has their amount of money that, you know, that's generated per stream. And naturally, in this part of the world, we have the shortest end of the stick, mm -hmm. right? So if you assume that in parts of North America, like Yankee, for instance, where relatively speaking, if you take Spotify, for example, they have like the highest amount of money generated per stream. Fred, I mean, if you're an artist on Spotify, you would need an average of like 378,000 streams to generate enough money for you to afford a Starbucks. 300 and what? 78,000 streams. 378,000. Streams on Spotify. Assuming if your music, you know, be if music way, it be majority of Ghanaians and Nigerians where they listen to. Mm. That's, that's terrible. Because, which is another thing, you know, perhaps maybe the conversation would sort of delve into that area is there is no time ever in human history where we need, especially for creatives or as creatives, that we must or should be involved in policy shaping than now. Absolutely, I agree. Do you understand? Yeah. So people are like, yeah, streaming, is, I mean, I've worked on some music projects where for certain artists who are not necessarily pop artists or whose music do not fit into various pop segments, like maybe uh, hard bop or bebop jazz, for instance, I put their stuff, like, these are people I work with, right? When I'm distributing their material, it's online just to serve as an interactive business card mm -hmm. of what they're capable of doing because their bread and butter would come from touring or from synchronization and other licensing opportunities. Because, I mean, if I can get a sync opportunity which can give me $35,000 for just 30 seconds of a song I've produced, why the fuck would I have to bother about streaming numbers mm -hmm. when it's pitiful? Because if you're not doing Drake or Beyonce numbers, then it'd be some way. Yeah, You understand? So you realize that, and you also need to notice that um, the two most important streaming platforms are Spotify and Apple Music. Then there's everybody else. Yeah. Now, if you're an audiophile, then you'd go for Tidal because they have that option of like getting the closest representation of what the music was supposed to sound like from the studio. Mm. You understand what I'm trying yeah. to say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because Tidal had that option. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so <coughs> my Sorry, point see. is, if, and it's not if, streaming is the technology of the noun. Streaming is the future. It's inevitable. We need to fix that system. You need to understand that just before Spotify, I, I've been a long time Spotify user, but before it was available in Ghana, I had to use a VPN, right? Mm -hmm. To be able to access Spotify. Now, around the time they moved and launched widespread in Africa, they were being probed in EU Parliament about their payment structure. Right. Now, yeah, and that's why when I hear about streaming farms, I won't personally engage in it. Because I am not cut out for certain things. Mm -hmm. I'd, I'd be fearful some way. You understand? But what does the streaming farm do? Forgive my ignorance. Like, so, Bas it's, it's, okay, you, you want to, because you... A streaming farm is basically, um, it's like an array of streaming servers, computers, mobile devices that are programmed to stream a, a particular, particular song, song over, over time. and over and over again. So you have the, the numbers. But, mm. but you know why I wouldn't criticize streaming farms? The major labels are complicit in oh, it. Yes. French Montana and other artists yeah. were found to be using streaming farms. Yeah. But their stuff, sorry, their, their stuff were not taking down the DSPs. They're yeah. taking off the streaming platforms yeah. because they're assigned to major labels. Another thing people fail to realize is Spotify, for instance, is owned, like the major labels have major shares in Spotify. Yeah. So the labels themselves are to blame for a lot of the nonsense that's happening in the space. The poor uh, monetary compensation. So it's not necessarily even Spotify yeah. directly. Because here's the thing. If, I, I've forgotten the exact percentages, but for hypothesis, uh, like for, to, to make a hypothesis, right? If 
70% of the 100% shares of Spotify, for instance, be um, owned by the three majors. That's mm. Sony, Warner, Universal. And under them, you have like tens of thousands of other smaller, 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 mm. smaller companies. If they collectively own, let's say, 70%, their payment structure is very arbitrary, but the easiest way to actually break it down is if from 1st January to 1st February, they made $30 billion, that lump sum... 70% of them is taking off first mm -hmm. and distributed in the varying percentages of these labels. Mm. The remaining 30% running of the company day inside, paying their staff, mm -hmm. uh, whatever is left is what is now used to calculate the streaming amounts that is paid out to everybody globally. Mm. And that's yeah. fucked up. That's crazy. I mean, it's obvious it's a ripoff. The thing that, from a lay perspective, Mm. Um, has always baffled me. I know there was a there was an artist that was trying to sue one of the record companies. Is the difference between I don't know if you call like the physical copy of a record. Mm. If I bought a CD mm. or listen to a CD, mm -hmm. mm. the CD costs a particular amount. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but with uh, streaming, what it sounds to me is they've done is. You saying three hundred and seventy-eight thousand approximately? Times. Approximately, yeah. That's every time it's been listened to. The way they are monetizing it mm. is so skewed towards ripping off the artist. In my mind, is that like for a long time, if I wanted to support an artist that I really liked, I still go out and buy their CD because I thought streaming their record was like just basically taking their art for free, and I, yeah. I didn't feel comfortable doing it. So I think the record labels are complicit. I think they're doing it on purpose. And it's also a way for them to cheat the artist. So if the artists have found a cheat code, a cheat code yeah, I think mm. then more Go power to them. So um um Kofi, um let's come to uh, music in Ghana. Mm. What's what what annoys you? Everything about it, really. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that practitioners in this space really don't care about what happens in the space. They, everybody complains, but nobody is, is prepared to like sort of take arms. And, and I think I, I kind of understand mm. what it is. It's also partly a Ghanaian thing. We complain, but we are not like proactive. Mm. That's the first problem. The second problem is the fact that we live in an era of social gratification and capital. Mm. So you have a lot of people who <laughs> are used as conduits to wash money. So they have a setting lifestyle, wink, 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 mm -hmm. Hajiya for real. <laughs> I said stuff like this like four <laughs> years ago and people nearly took me to the stakes. Because what it means is if at the floss and at the show, say, I did some luxurious house for Isle Gone and I have the biggest pool of every artist in Ghana and I did bash bash Ghanaian artist and I know the feet come out openly to say I am not making money from music. When everybody knows that's my primary business, you need to start asking questions. Mm -hmm. Also, if you have a country where a majority of income from music are from live shows, from merchandising, mind you, two of our top artists started having, uh, began their own clothing line and couldn't sustain it for more than two years. That's even if it was a real thing. You need to yeah. ask very pertinent questions. It means that we are yet to fully understand mm. marketing properly. Because there's a difference between an audience and a fan base. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Your fan base knows you. They, sorry, they know you. An audience knows your song. They know your song. You understand? Absolutely. So, you can't sell merch if you have an audience but not fans. Think about it. So, that being, that being said, it means a majority of our artists actually have an audience, not a fan base. Can, I want to ask both of you this uh, because you're more, you have your tentacles in the industry. From what he's saying now, would you say Shatter has more of a fan base than Sack? Yes. I, I don't know what I'll, I don't know what to say, but I'll say this. Yes, and I think so. Honestly, um, I haven't paid attention, but I'll say this. As in Sack has more of an audience and Shatter has more of a fan, fan base. base. Yeah. No. <laughs> No. I'll I'll disagree. Yeah, yeah. No, let me no. let me tell you yeah. why. Shatter know they do paid shows. Correct me if I'm wrong. No, he, he really. Yeah. 
recently? Recently, I don't know, but yeah. Okay, here's here's I, what I remember. I, here's he what was I know. Big bucks for. No, no, no. He they charge a title sponsor. They, they give him block. They take the cost of the venue. They pay for the PA and stuff. They come to be the sole people that sell beverages. Chichinga and those things. Can, no, but Shata was was on the last um, Afrochella there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure they they, they paid it. Oh they no, 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 that's a different thing. Oh, I'm okay. talking about oh. Afrochella. They happen when once, once a year. Once a year. Okay. And it was a one-time thing, right? Yeah. So well, his appearance was. I don't know if they're gonna book him again, but no, I mean that was the only time he performed at Afrochella. Yeah. yeah. How yeah. many stages like Afrochella has he performed at? Okay. That's my point. Okay. And this is not like throwing shots at him by any chance, right? What I'm trying to say is. If I be artist, we are they charge five CDs at the gate. We five hundred people they come or four hundred people they come. We Motombo be artist, it be free gate. But the sponsor has carried the cost of everything and paid him for his own headline show, with the hopes that when he pulls a crowd of two thousand people, they don't have any other beverages to sell but their beverage, water, and chichinga and other petty foods. They make their money times five. Mm-hmm. I and Mutombo, who get actual fans? You. I would say. Perhaps. If people are willing to pay to see you. That's a different conversation. And these are conversations we need to start having in Ghana. Everything for the music space for Ghana be vibes and inshallah. You have just a few good people who are like really, really pushing. I'll give you a classic example. For majority of Ghanaian pop artists, when they have to do shows abroad, they work with Ghanaian promoters and events people who, for the most part, are mostly hustlers. Black Sharif is a glitch in the matrix. Before them, be, before Black Sharif, the only people who were like really doing like tours, like fucking boys, Abel Taylor, Pathomas and Kwashibi area band, Santrophy, um, um, Aisoba, People like that. So, Charlie, there's, there's rules to this shit. Your average Ghana artist go fly, go Maryland or some place, perform at some whatever, whatever, to mostly a Ghanaian nice audience. And there's nothing wrong with that. We have club tours. Mm. But my point is, when that becomes the very, like the only yardstick, most of which, so, you see, a majority of those artists, if they don't they pay them for the shows. Then my payment be the, fi- the, the fact, say, I make you fly, come Abu Chi. Yeah. And I've yeah. given you extra slots, so you bring five other niggas as part of your entourage, and you charge them in Ghana for flying for with visa. you. Yeah. For their visa, yeah. and they will get to America, and they won't return. return. Bro, this stuff, <laughs> this stuff, process. this stuff, this stuff has happened for decades. Yeah, yeah. And the same musicians in the space are complicit, and so yeah. it has never really created a proper nurturing ground for artists to really have like a proper global presence because we keep shooting ourselves in the foot. As recent as 2019, just before COVID happened, the most popular Ghanaian song in neighboring Benin, as in you left Ghana, you go Togo. From Togo, you enter Benin before you enter Niger, was VIP Zahun Kawum. That was released in 2002. Wow. Let that sink in. Yeah, um, um, I know that song was a big hit in Nigeria. I, I didn't know. Do you know why? Um, Kenny's music, yeah, the guy yeah, who introduced yeah. Two Face, mm. partnered with I think was it Ajikot at the time that was working with uh, these guys. Yeah. So they had like a joint venture to help push VIP mm. in other territories. So are you trying to tell me that if that didn't happen, even VIPs at Hunkawum in neighboring Benin, no go happen? Charlie, we need to get serious here. We need to start having very, very hard conversations. And we for stop say, oh, we need people to come and invest in the space. Guy, if I'm a multi-millionaire and I'm a serial entrepreneur, I know where to put five CDs to get 10 or 15 back. It's not going to be music. Yeah. So when you see people clearly pumping in millions of dollars, right? Yeah. It'd be money laundering. They're, yeah. trying, they're trying to launder money. Because cool. any sane business person would like to do their due diligence to see that, okay, when I put this, this, this is what's going to kind of... Like, you need a setting, at least at a ba- the most basic level, that setting things are in place to make you make sensible returns. 
I don't think any sane person will try to fetch water from, you know, from a river with a basket. Mm. That's what we do here. So we need to start asking, and any sensible entrepreneur won't have to be asked to come and invest in a sector. If a sector is booming, Charlie, automatically you go put your money for there. Yeah. It's, yeah. Like, it's like shit and flies. Sorry to say, yeah. but that's what it is. Yeah. So when I hear creatives saying, yeah, yeah, we need people to come and invest, you're just you're exposing your stupidity, really. <laughs> wow. Yeah. I just saw an interview. I don't think that she will be too... <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 you see, you need to, Charlie. bro. You, you, you for, yes, but it's a real thing. I mean, yeah. what no, you're saying is thing. very valid. You need valid, to ask same questions, bro. Like, for me to take my money, pump into an artist, like somebody tweeted something. I was laughing because it was like somebody tweeted, uh, There's this guy, Nana G. We follow each other. I think he works with Liza. Two days ago, he tweeted that putting your money in a Ghanaian artist is not as lucrative as using it to start a poetry form. And people started laughing and were dragging him. I was like, you know what? The way he said it was funny. Like, the way he tweeted it, it is funny me. You understand? But I was mm -hmm. like, this is so, 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 so funny. Because literally, two nights prior, a friend of mine came to my house. He came to visit me with a huge truck. So he buys some Kia truck. He brand them and things. He started to deliver, like, uh, he to supply eggs. Mm -hmm. He started a poultry farm in, in uh, OEB. Brilliant record producer. He does mostly orchestr orchestral uh, type stuff. He's literally, he's like a month or two months in, but he started seeing more money than music ever made for him. Of course. And that's, that's just wild to me. You know why? We say if we they use music past white people, mm. there's no gathering, like I said. Music, you cannot separate music from anything an African that we does. Do. It's insane, actually, that we don't get... It's a wake-up call yeah. for creatives, especially in this time. Um... Clearly, a lot of things are evolving really quickly. And, Charlie, life only favors those who show up ready. Yeah. You know what I mean? Charlie. Fred. <laughs> Bro. Got anything to add to what um, annoys you? No, I, I just, I, I'm glad that you always bring some very interesting people. Mm. Um, Kofi's one of the few. No, no mm. disrespect to any other, but the one of the few people I've met that I don't know if you know I don't I don't speak a lot when I'm mm. like learning, and I find you very fascinating. But the things that you even spoke about off you know the podcast with the work that you're doing research and whatnot. So mm. um, I want to say to you that I feel like a lot of times people like yourselves may feel like you're operating in isolation, but I know you have a big uh, heart and a big mind. And I want to encourage you to keep going. Don't mm. let yes. how how uh, daunting or how frustrating, actually not daunting, but how frustrating it is, mm. deter you from plugging away. Yeah. Dope, dope. And, and also quite recently, I've seen that you are sharing some of your paintings to on your Instagram page. Mm. And it's it's dope. What was your Instagram page? Um, um, Beatsmenets art. At... Art? at at I uh, I am beatmenace dot Yeah, art. I at I am The the paintings that you are sharing now is is crazy. It, they thank they you, actually thank look you, thank like you. photos, like thank you. You know, photos. Charlie, guys, yeah, another interesting conversation with the beat menace and Charlie. It's been, it's been, it's been dope. It's been insightful. Yeah, yeah, very been, educated, yeah, very, very inter like Charlie. Very, thanks very, for having very, me. I'm Charlie, a big fan of the podcast. Charlie, so, Charlie, Charlie being here has just been an honor. Charlie, man. thank you, and thank you, thank appreciate you. Appreciate that, Charlie. Charlie. Thank you for coming through. Charlie, do like, leave a review, share, and Charlie, our YouTube is is up and running. You know, you can watch this too, and keep you sharing. Might, you might be watching. Yeah, keep, keep giving feedback, Charlie. The F more, let's divide. We are through. Yes, sir. <laughs> nice one.